They say that in war, survival is as much about knowledge as it is about courage. During World War II, soldiers faced not only enemy fire, but also the silent killers of disease and dehydration. Clean water could mean the difference between life and death. Yet, far from the luxury of modern filters or tablets, troops developed an ingenious way to purify water in the field, one that's been nearly forgotten, despite being remarkably effective and entirely possible to replicate today. This is not some theoretical wartime trivia. What we're diving into today is a proven purification technique that helped Allied and Axis soldiers alike turn filthy parasite-laden puddles into safe drinking water using materials found almost anywhere. And the best part? It still works just as well in your backyard, your camping setup, or an off-grid survival situation. So, if you ever wondered how people managed to drink safely before chlorine tablets and UV pens, stay tuned. This is history you can actually use. By 1942, troops in North Africa, the Pacific Islands and rural Eastern Europe were facing one common enemy, contaminated water. Soldiers quickly learned that thirst could cripple a unit faster than combat wounds. Dysentery typhoid and cholera outbreaks weren't just statistics, they were daily threats. The military had limited supply lines, and water purification tablets were often scarce or spoiled under heat. Out of necessity, Soldiers resorted to a field method known simply as sand filtration and boiling with charcoal, a clever adaptation of basic chemistry and physics using nothing more than sand, gravel and charred wood. It wasn't glamorous, but it worked, and it saved lives from the Sahara to the jungles of Burma. Here's what soldiers did. First, they dig a small pit near a water source, never directly in it, but close enough that groundwater would slowly seep through the earth. This naturally filtered out debris, algae, and some bacteria as water moved through layers of sand and soil. The clearer water that pooled in the pit was then collected carefully into mess tins or canteens. Next came the critical step, boiling. But soldiers didn't just boil the water, they added charcoal often made from the remains of campfires. The charcoal acted as a natural adsorbent, trapping toxins, foul odours and chemical residues. Combined with boiling, which killed pathogens, this two-step method produced surprisingly clean, drinkable water, even from sources that looked like nothing more than muddy runoff. This combination, earth filtration, charcoal adsorption and heat sterilization, wasn't just improvisation. It was the foundation of what we now know as activated carbon filtration a technique still used in modern water filters from brands like Brita and Berkey. What World War II soldiers did instinctively is now backed by decades of environmental science. Modern chemistry confirms what those soldiers learned by experience. Charcoal, especially when activated by heat, has a vast porous surface area that captures bacteria, heavy metals, and even certain chemical residues. When paired with boiling, it addresses the full spectrum of biological and chemical threats in untreated water. Unlike chlorine tablets, this method doesn't leave a chemical taste. Unlike solar stills, it doesn't take hours to produce a drinkable amount. And unlike complex filters, 
It requires no replacement parts or specialized gear, just soil, sand, heat, and burned wood. That's why, even in the 21st century, this WU2 era technique remains one of the most practical survival skills you can learn. In disaster zones, remote camps, or homestead living, the same logic applies. Filter first, adsorb second, sterilize last. If you ever find yourself without modern filtration tools, here's how to apply this wartime wisdom. First, find a spot near a riverbank or lake shore and dig a shallow hole, around one to two feet deep. Allow the water to naturally seep in through the surrounding soil. Once the water settles, scoop it carefully. This is your preliminary filtered source. Next, take some charcoal from a recent fire. Crush it finely, but not into powder. You want a gritty texture. Place the charcoal in a metal pot or tin, pour in the water and bring it to a rolling boil for at least 10 minutes. Let it cool, then strain it through a clean cloth, if available. What you'll have is water that's visually clear, safe from most pathogens, and far better tasting than raw, boiled water. To test its practicality, some modern bushcrafters have replicated this technique in side-by-side -side experiments with store-bought filters. The results? The charcoal boil method produces water with similar clarity and microbial safety levels, though it won't remove 100% of heavy metals. Still, for field survival, it's more than sufficient and completely sustainable. It's fascinating that something born in the chaos of global war still holds value in our modern, comfortable lives. We've traded fieldcraft for convenience, but, you know, the wisdom of the past hasn't lost its power. Soldiers didn't have the luxury of technology, but they understood nature and physics at a practical level most of us overlook today. In fact, this technique traces its roots even further back, to 19th century explorers and even ancient civilizations who used charcoal sand filtration in clay pots. World War II simply brought it to the forefront again, refined by necessity and field experience. Every sip of clean water they managed to produce carried with it a lesson in resilience, adaptation and ingenuity. For those passionate about living history or practical preparedness, reviving this method isn't just about nostalgia, it's about self-reliance. In a grid-down scenario or wilderness trek, knowing how to create potable water without modern tools is a game-changer. Try building your own small filtration pit in your backyard, experiment with different soil types, or create a layered charcoal sand bottle filter to see how clarity improves with each stage. You'll quickly see that this isn't just a relic. It's a living skill, as relevant now as it was 80 years ago. World War II may have ended decades ago, but its field-tested survival wisdom still speaks clearly. When all else fails, knowledge keeps you alive. So, next time you watch a documentary or read a field manual, remember, some of the greatest survival technologies weren't invented in labs, but dug out of the dirt by soldiers desperate to live another day. If this kind of forgotten history fascinates you as much as it does us here on Backyard Wisdom, Hit that subscribe button, share this with a friend who loves World War II or survival stories, and let's keep the wisdom of the past alive, one lesson at a time.